What's up folks? This is Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. I'm back again with another video this weekend because just when I had given up all hope in the Postal Service as I watched my Dragon Bane Bestiary and Core Rule book float around the Midwest on a grand tour, it finally arrived unexpectedly this morning. It's been late since February 26th when it was supposed to be in my hot little hands but now I have it and I'm ready to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get over to the table. First, a brief history of Dragonbane. Dragonbane was originally released in 1982 under the Swedish title Drakar och Demonger, or Dragons and Demons, by Adventure Games. It was originally a conversion of the basic role-playing system by Chaosium, famously used in Call of Cthulhu and RuneQuest. The inclusion of Mallards as a playable kin is a result of this relationship to RuneQuest. The system moved to a D20 mechanic in the 1985 Expert set, and in 2021, our favorite Swedish developer, the first step over the condition, please. Free Alligan, or Free League, picked up the license. In 2023, the Mirth and Mayhem Core Rules box set seen here was released under the newly built system, which is a blend of a roll under D20 with their in house. Mutant Year Zero Engine. My history with Dragonbane. In September of last year, I did some videos on the then newly released Dragonbane box set, which I thought was quite impressive. I gave my initial thoughts and did a video playthrough of the game. After six months and additional releases, where does it stand? Let's get into it. The premise of the game. Dragonbane is a solo-friendly, free-league fantasy RPG based upon the aforementioned Dragons and Demons, which itself had loosely adapted rules from the basic RPG and RuneQuest. You might expect with Free League that the game would use their beloved Mutant Year Zero engine, but you'd only be partially right. Yes, but actually no. Dragonbane is a brilliant blend of D20 roll-under mechanics with the trappings of Mutant Year Zero woven seamlessly throughout. Together, it creates something entirely new, yet familiar, and most importantly, fun. To give you an idea of just how good I think the game is, since its release, I have sold my entire Forbidden Lands collection as this game effectively replaces that game for me. It does all of the things that I love about Forbidden Lands, but with less overhead and faster play at the table. I have a lot of uh, Free League Mutant Year Zero engine products, and honestly, I would be thrilled if they converted more to this newer engine. The characters of Dragonbane. What better way to understand a game than to look at how the players will interact with the world through their characters? Dragonbane characters are very reminiscent of earlier Free League works, particularly Forbidden Lands, including kin that don't impact the character's attributes but do provide a special ability, and professions which might sound like classes but mostly just determine what starting skills are available and provide a single heroic ability, as well as skills that will be used for just about every action involving a die roll in the game. To get started, you will pick your kin from one of the six available in the core rules set, either box set or the new hardcover, or 15 if you have also picked up the bestiary, which adds nine more. You're going to find all of your classic fantasy favorites, as well as some of the more interesting choices, like the mallard in the core rules, yes, it is a duck, or the ogre in the bestiary. After that, you'll pick one of the ten available professions, which represent fantasy tropes from fighters, thieves, and mages, to more unique mariners, merchants, and scholars. As alluded to earlier, the profession will determine six of the, uh, the skills that you will be trained in to start the game, as well as a single heroic ability tied to that profession, though this can be swapped for a different ability if approved by the GM. In another choice familiar to Forbidden Lands players, the next step is determining age, which can be done randomly or by choosing. Younger characters will have bonuses to physical attributes, but less trained skills, whereas older characters begin to lose physical attributes, but will have more trained skills as well as higher mental attributes. It is a nice balance which makes viable playing a, as a party of heroes that aren't all fresh out of hero school with their graduation blade and an advanced degree in murder hoboing. Next step is rolling for attributes, which involves rolling 46, drop the lowest, six times, assigning as rolled to one attribute at a time, but with the ability to swap two of them at the end. It's a nice compromise between the down the line and the put them wherever you want methods. Attributes are particularly important as they will help to determine speed, damage bonuses, hit points, willpower points, 
and probably most importantly, skill roles. Skill roles are determined to be successful by comparing to the skills level. Untrained skills have base chances of between 3 and 7 determined by the governing attribute, whereas the skills that are trained are double this value. They have a chance to increase at the end of each mission, and as the game is levelless, a measure of growth for the character is when a skill advances to the score of 18, the highest possible skill level, which then allows the character to take an additional heroic ability. How combat works. Combat initiative is determined by initiative cards, which are used in most, if not all, of the Mutant Year Zero games, with the lower numbers acting first in the round. But where Dragonbane first deviates is in the strategic value of forgoing your action if you have won the initiative. This is because your defensive options of parrying or dodging attacks are forfeited if you've already acted in the round. So by holding off, you can wait until an opponent misses and then attack them after they have given up their own ability to parry or dodge. It gives combat a real sense of cat and mouse, with heroes cautiously waiting for the perfect moment to strike instead of running headlong Leroy Jenkins style. Attack rolls are simple skill rolls, which, like other skill rolls, have the ability to dragon or crit or demon and fumble when rolling a 1 or 20, respectively. Hit points in the game are relatively low compared to modern games, while weapon damages are often quite high. This will combine to keep players on their toes. There are a number of different combat options, and that is even before considering the multitude of heroic abilities, which further open up the panoply of strategic choices available in a Dragon Bait battle. In battle, you will face two primary types of combatants, NPCs and monsters. NPCs will behave like player characters, rolling to hit against their skills and generally acting accordingly. Monsters, on the other hand, are an entirely different beast. These will act similarly to monsters in Forbidden Lands with predetermined AI charts that are determined by rolling a d6. Monsters tend to be particularly deadly as they automatically hit and are generally not able to be parried, though dodging is usually still an option. Many of the deadlier monsters also have multiple actions a turn as determined by their ferocity level. The core box and rule book offers a meager but serviceable 15 primary enemy types between NPCs and monsters, not including the decent list of common animals and human NPC variants, which will give you some additional options. Adding the bestiary is going to be a near automatic purchase whether you bought the box or the core rule book as it includes not only 63 different enemies, but also several variants of many of them. There are some duplications, as the bestiary does have the enemies from the core rules. However, the bestiary adds variety, such as the dragon, which is a single entry in the core rules, but has four variants in the bestiary. Additionally, each entry includes a random encounter and an adventure seed involving the appropriate beastie that the entry pertains to. This alone is an invaluable resource for any GM and should be seen as an industry standard practice for bestiaries in the future. After reading through the bestiary PDF several times, I am comfortable saying that Dragonbane now has a sufficient enemy count to provide a party with challenges for several years without getting stale. Magic The magic in Dragonbane is very much a product of sword and sorcery inspired style. With three primary schools, animism, elementalism, and mentalism, as well as general magic, which any mage can practice. Each casting will require a use of power points, willpower points that is, determined by the power level the caster is aiming for, with each rank requiring two willpower to be expended. The caster then makes a casting roll against their school casting skill, animism for example, and determines if they were successful. In the event of a dragon, they choose one of three possible critical effects, while rolling a demon requires a roll on the spell mishap table, which can be quite nasty. One very pulpy aspect of casting is that mages that lack the willpower points to cast a spell they want can choose to trade hit points for willpower points in order to make it happen. Overall, the magic system feels very at home in a Howardian or Liber type of campaign setting, and I could easily see this being utilized for even a Dark Sun style Athos campaign. Other stuff. There is so much more about this game that I like that going into each detail would require a full-time job. What I will say is that I feel like there were many times that I could see the compromises made in streamlining aspects of the Forbidden Lands into this new system, and almost every single time I agreed with the choices made. 
Even basic mundane items still have mechanically beneficial game effects, and even mundane travel tasks like making camp or hunting can provide great roleplay fodder for a group that was so inclined. Dragonbane is far more engaging than it has any right to be based upon how simple the system is to run. Free League has really captured lightning in a bottle here, and I hope to see many more additional releases in the future. Comparing Entry Points Currently, there are two entry points into the Dragon Bane RPG, with the box set and the newly released hardcover Core Rules. It should be noted that the mechanical and gameplay elements covered in the box set Core Rules and the hardcover Core Rules are essentially identical, so you're not adding in that way by picking up both. That said, here are some advantages to both. The box set advantages include a solo rules pamphlet, titled Alone in Deepfall Breach, which is extremely useful and adds great value. You do get a copy of the full rules, which as I said, cover identically the same mechanical material. You get a gameplay mat with a grid. You get a Book of Adventures, which is a full campaign and a Gazetteer of the Misty Veil. Vale. You get a very nice fold-out map of said Misty Veil with beautiful artwork to boot. You have cards for initiative, treasure, adventure beats, and improvised weapons, a set of dice, and standees for all of the monsters that you'll find in the core rules. The advantages to the hardcover include that it is roughly $10 cheaper, making it an ideal choice for a player that doesn't need all of these extras. It includes an additional adventure which is not in the box set, and it's a nice hardcover book. As I'm quite sure you can tell by my gushing over the contents of this game, I really like Dragon Bane. I think that this is an excellent entry point for players that are new to role-playing games, and I think that this has enough old-school aesthetics that folks that have been on hiatus will enjoy coming back to a game that's like Dragon Bane. It's a very flexible system and could easily be used in a multitude of campaign settings, but the one included is quite good. Whenever you are thinking about getting into the game, I would consider the bestiary a must-buy. I think the best value is going to be the box set, but as you can see, I do have a copy of the core rulebook because I really like the style of the Free League hardback books. One thing that I have added to my own Dragon Bane game, which I'm going to be sharing with you, is a custom encounters table. Now, this doesn't include any copyrighted uh, creatures or items, but it does have a great variety that you will clearly be able to align if you are using the bestiary in your Dragon Bane games. This is a die drop table where you roll one of each of your polyhedrals to determine what kind of enemy you are going to run into as well as what they're doing, what their role is, how prepared they are, and what direction they came from. Then whenever you roll for the enemy group or the type, there is a separate set of tables for subgroups that align very neatly with some of the tropes that you'll find in the bestiary. Wink, wink. If you would like to get a copy of this table for yourself, you can email me at booksbricksandboards at gmail.com, and I will gladly provide this free of charge. If you have enjoyed this video and you have been enjoying my content, I would much appreciate if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel, as that will get the channel out to more viewers and give me the uh, availability to be able to provide more content like you're seeing. If you have any thoughts or comments on Dragon Bane, I'd love to have that conversation with you in the comments section. So, until next time, this has been Justin with Books, Bricks, and Boards. Good gaming, and God bless.